Hello, this is the screencast for section 6.1 to 6.4, and unit 6 is on thermodynamics. And just like the other uh, units, this slideshow is it, shared with you in the unit 6 review folder on Schoology. So you could follow along with that if you want, and you can click on these optional videos and watch those if you want. And unit 6 is typically 7 and 9 percent of the AP exam weighting. And 6.1, uh, it's on endothermic and exothermic processes. The learning objective is explain the relationship between experimental observations and energy changes associated with a chemical or physical transformation. So the essential knowledge for the section, the first thing, um, you want to know that if there's a temperature change for an object, that means that its, its energy has changed. And then you also want to understand the difference between system and surroundings and how that applies to thermodynamics. A system is whatever you're studying. The surroundings is everything else. And then you see a picture of it over here. And then those two put together would be considered the entire universe. And then you want to understand the difference, the difference between exothermic and endothermic. And it's all about the direction of energy flow. Um, in terms of the system, if energy is flowing from the surroundings to the system, that's considered endothermic. So in terms of the system, an endothermic process would be considered positive energy flow, energy flowing into the system. Exothermic is just the opposite. So exothermic, that's energy flowing from the system to the surroundings. And in terms of the system, that is negative energy. And uh, for the endothermic processes, um, if energy is flowing from the surroundings to the system, that's going to feel cold, so it feels cool. In an exothermic process, energy is flowing from the system to the surroundings, that's going to feel warm. Um, next you have uh, 6.2 is on energy diagrams and the learning objective is represent a chemical or physical transformation with an energy diagram. And the essential knowledge for this section is you want to be able to look at an energy diagram, which there's two of them shown over here, and determine you know, what's an endothermic or what's an exothermic process, or you want to be able to draw out one of these. Um, for thermodynamics, really you're only looking at the potential energy level of the reactants and the potential energy level of the products and then what's the difference between them. Um, thermodynamics doesn't deal with this activation energy barrier. That's more kinetics. That's, that's from unit 5. So you look at where did you start, where did you end, and what's the difference. Um, in this case, um, this is an endothermic energy diagram. The products have more potential energy than the reactants. So that difference in energy needs to be absorbed from the surroundings. So that's an endothermic process. This one, energy diagram B, that one's exothermic, where the products have a lower potential energy than the reactants. So that excess energy, that difference in energy, is then given off to the surroundings. So that's an exothermic process. 6.3 is on heat transfer and thermal equilibrium, and the learning objective is explain the relationship between the transfer of thermal energy and molecular collision. Okay, and the essential knowledge here, the first thing you want to understand is the kinetic energy and how kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. So things at higher temperature will have more kinetic energy. That means the particles are moving around more. Then uh, the concept of heat transfer. Uh, the first one, in, in general, heat is transferred from the hot object to the cool object. Now you also want to understand what's happening at the particle level to allow that heat to transfer. And this is kind of shown over here. When, when you have uh, warmer particles, they have more kinetic energy. If they come in contact with cooler objects, they're going to vibrate against each other and they're going to bump against those other particles and there's going to be a transfer of kinetic energy. So if you're looking at what's really happening at the particle level, 
there's the heat transfer, but understand that what's really being transferred is kinetic energy because the faster moving particles will vibrate and bump into the slower moving particles and transfer some of their kinetic energy. And that makes those slower moving particles move faster and their temperature goes up until you get to thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium is really when all the particles have the same average kinetic energy, which means that they're, they're gonna have the same temperature and then no more heat will be transferred at that point once you get to thermal equilibrium. All right, and the last section for today is on heat capacity and calorimetry. The learning objective is calculate the heat, Q, absorbed or released by a system undergoing heating, cooling, based on the amount of the substance, the heat capacity, and the change in temperature. So the essential knowledge for this, um, a, a lot of it deals with working with this equation right here. Q equals MC delta T. And this equation is, it's on your equation sheet. Uh, Q represents heat, um, and that's measured in joules. Uh, M is mass, that's gonna be measured in grams. C is specific heat, um, and that's a property of a substance. It's nothing that you have to memorize, but uh, you know the, the units are usually joules per gram degree Celsius. Uh, Water is a common one that we have to work with. Uh, that number will be given to you. It, it's 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. But that's specific heat. And then uh, delta T is your change in temperature. So things with larger specific heats have smaller changes in temperature in general. All right, and then the concept of calorimetry. Calorimetry is a lab process where you can measure uh, changes in, in heat or heat flow. And this is a setup right here. We did a few of these in class. We have a, a coffee cup calorimeter um, just to, uh, to insulate um, the system from the, the, from the outside so no heat uh, escapes to the, the outside to the, to the room. And then you have a uh, the thermometer to measure changes in temperature. And then there's some water in the, the calorimeter to absorb or release heat energy. And then the, you do something in the calorimeter, and that's like you can have a reaction, you can put different substances in there, but the system is going to be something that's in the water. So when you do calorimetry, um, the, to measure heat flow, if the, the temperature of the calorimeter goes up, that means the system was giving off heat energy, so that means it's going to be an exothermic process. So if the temperature of the calorimeter goes up, that means it's going to be an exothermic process for the system that's inside the calorimeter. If the temperature goes down, that means it's an endothermic process. And the system was absorbing heat energy from the water and bringing the temperature down. Um, another thing you want to know with this is moles of reaction. So sometimes you have to determine an enthalpy change in terms of kilojoules per mole of reaction. The way you get the kilojoules is by using this uh, Q equals MC delta T. And when you do this equation, you find Q in terms of joules. And you can just divide by 1,000 to get to kilojoules. And you would divide by moles that are reacting. Now, when you're talking about this in, in terms of moles of reaction, it's not moles of water. It's how many moles of this substance you put in to the calorimeter. So that's calorimetry. Uh, we've done a couple labs with that. Um, you might also want to refer to those. Um, otherwise, that's all for today. Have a great day.